All right, so we followed this path very nicely the past couple days, at least since the last video here on YouTube. And now going into next week, there's a couple key setups that I'm looking for. Uh, the first main one looking at SPX right here is we need to stay above 4,430, especially 4,420 in order for there to be a support. If we break this minor like 10 point range, there's a lot more potential for downside, which is eventually what I'd like to see. However, there's still actually a good chance uh, we see more upside here early this week. Now we do have CPI this week, which is a very critical event, along with some econ data and a quarterly OPEX, which is on Friday. Uh, so a lot of events are approaching, which means a lot of volatility. I would expect a lot of volatility this week. I actually like to see more upside to around 4,480, 4,500 at some point this week, uh, which will provide a very nice short opportunity in terms of risk reward. So that's my ideal case here. As long as we stay above the levels I just provided, I do see this happening. However, if we do break it, of course, uh, there can be a waterfall uh, sell to the downside. Momentum can pick up. So do watch this range right here. Very critical, especially for this week and the following week, because I do expect this will break at some point, ideally uh, by next week. However, I'd like to enter a short beforehand uh, so I can profit on that downside. So I will be looking for that this week. Also a couple setups here. A Tesla is one we did reject off this resistance. This is the one I shared in the last video. Uh, we did have this breakout. This is from another video two Sundays ago when we broke out above this downward trend line and then we got above this range. Very strong upside move. Now it's chopping because it's under this trend line. If we do see early upside in terms of the S&P 500 like I'd like to see this week, there is potential that we have have a breakout actually on Tesla here, which would require above 252, 253 roughly. We'd like to have hourly confirmation above, especially if it is early in the session uh, when there's a lot of volume present. Uh, but my blue arrow here, I would like to see break above this trend line. Where did I get this trend line? Got it here. If you look at the daily chart, it goes back for quite a while, it goes back and connects in between both of these pivots over here, and you actually can make it a slightly more optimized here if I connect it to the top part. But uh, we've seen numerous rejections off this trend line as well as recently. Another rejection over here as well as some consolidation on it. And now we're rejecting it yet again. So at the moment, it's still acting as a hard resistance. However, we cannot sell off uh, for quite a bit until this blue range is broken again. Uh, this is a now demand zone. Previously was a supply zone. As you can see here, numerous rejections off the zone. Uh, we would have to break below this for there to be a valid short setup. Otherwise, in between between this zone as well as this trend line, it's in a neutral zone. Neutral zone, at least in my opinion, not a good spot to trade unless it's very short-term scalp. So I'm not interested in Tesla at all until it can break out above this level or break down below this. Uh, so both of these are my areas of interest and with a bias being a little bit more towards breaking out to the upside. And this would likely be short-term. I'm not interested in going long uh, for an extended period of time just because I do believe we do see more downside here on the S&P 500 after a short-term bounce is over. Uh, so just keep that in mind going forward. But in terms of a day trade, maybe an overnight trade, there's potential for either side of this. So just be aware of that going into this week. Also, something else to be aware of is Apple here. Nice setup, similar box in terms of a previous supply zone, as we can see here, which is now a demand zone. We closed within it based on Friday's close. We were unable to get above both of my pivots over here uh, from Friday. Had a nice bounce to start the day with a strong hourly candle, but it actually broke down. Typically when you see a strong start to a day, like we saw on Friday and then consolidation afterwards, kind of in a flag formation, and it actually breaks down instead of up. Uh, that is a bearish sign, which typically has continuation afterwards. So keep that in mind because there is a potential short setup if we do break below roughly 177.64, which is the lower end of my box here. I would like to see confirmation under. Hourly confirmation is always preferable. However, if it is a scalp or shorter duration, uh, 50 minute can suffice. So I'm looking for confirmation uh, to the downside here. If we were to get back above 179.53 though, uh, there's potential for a longs to 180.73. This would likely be an intraday trade, but this is what I'm prepping for this week. Again, both scenarios work in terms of Tesla as well as Apple. Always good to be prepared for either, especially in such a volatile week like CPI and quarterly OPEX. So I'll be watching for either break. Likely would happen at some point Monday if we were to go to the downside or between Monday and Tuesday if we were to break back above the 179.53. So watch for that on Apple just because Apple's been getting quite a bit of volume lately, especially after it began its recent sell-off uh, from back here in early August. Uh, we saw that nice pop over here, but then an additional drop. Uh, so a lot more downside after this large sell on September 6th for three and a half percent, which is quite a bit for Apple for a day. So we won't be able to have any form of extended upside until 180.73 can be cracked. Again, my initial trade setup, if I were to go long, it would be above 
179.53 again. That can take us back to 180.73. And above that, you can see likely a gap fill around 182, 183 from this previous gap on September 6th, uh, between September 6th and September 7th. So those are the two bigger cap takers that I'm watching for this week in terms of a trade. My main setup though uh, will be the S&P 500. I'd like to short that at some point this week. If we do get a pop, ideally after CPI, because uh, I don't like to hold through large events like CPI. There's additional risk because you can see like a two, two and a half percent move even on a day uh, like CPI, just because it's such a large event, especially when inflation is one of the hot topics in the market. Uh, but again, my main focus will be the S&P 500 as well as NASDAQ uh, before I decide to take any trade setups on Tesla or on Apple. But speaking of NASDAQ over here, you can see similar blue demand zone it was a previous supply zone. Again, you're looking at a similarity here between a lot of these tickers, same structure on a lot of them, like we saw in Tesla, Apple, and now QQQ, a previous supply zone from a hard rejection over here, hard rejection over here as well as previous support uh, from back over here. We now just retested it based on Friday's close. So if we do get below this level, especially on a daily close, because we have yet to have a daily close below here after breaking out of it from back here on August 29th. So this is a retest so far. So far it's been relatively supportive despite the high wick that we saw on Friday. If we do gap down, let's say, or just have a daily close in general below this range, then we're looking at an overly whelming bearish scenario going forward. So keep that in mind. Daily close back below here, we can see a lot more bearish emphasis going forward. Again, I'd like to see that at some point, ideally end of this week into next week. Uh, again, I would like to see the upside first here, a uh, shortable pop that is before the breakdown, but always good to be ready for anything. If we do have a breakdown below uh, this range here, uh, then it is a viable short opportunity for a lot more downside, likely to retest the lows we already made on August 18th. As crazy as that may sound, because we're all the way up around 372 right now compared to the lows that it made around 354. Uh, it's very likely if we do get under uh, this range right here, especially with that daily close, two daily closes is the best confirmation, uh, but likely we would see a low again from down here. So this range here will be very critical this week. Exact coordinates on it in terms of the points is roughly 371.50 all the way up to 372.18. Do watch this range because what we saw last time on Thursday, we actually had a gap down below, but it was able to reclaim it by end of day, which is crucial. The daily closes everything in this scenario. So I find it unlikely if we were to gap down again, let's say this week below the range, I find it unlikely it'd be as favorable as what we saw on Thursday where it went back above. You tend to not get a second chance, especially in such a short duration between each day. So if we did have a gap down below, then you're looking at probably a bearish bias for not only that day, but the days following as long as you close below. So this is something that I'm focused on because it will pair very nicely with the S&P 500 if it were to break below that range I provided earlier in this video of around 4,420 to 4,430. Break below both of those on S&P 500 and NASDAQ would warrant a lot more downside to come. So that's my eventual target at some point. Just a matter of time at this point, again, with that additional risk of CPI approaching, best to wait until after such a key event. And speaking of CPI, there was quite a bit of hedging. i show over here uh, previously, or at least we saw an uptick in the VIX last week, and I do expect there to be hedging ahead of the CPI event as well. Typically is the case heading into such big events. However, I want you guys to watch this gap over here around 13. I would like to actually see this fill. The problem is if it doesn't fill before CPI because there's hedging going into the event, it actually means that there's likely going to be a vol unwinding after that event where we see something similar to Jackson Hole. If you remember, I was looking for vol to fall. That's the saying that I had uh, before because we saw the big uptick around that Jackson Hole time period around this range. And then we had Jackson Hole and then we saw vol fall by quite a bit soon afterwards because there's hedging into that event. And then it began to unwind the days following. And then we saw a very large reduction all the way from around 17 back to 13 in the course of about a week or so, which means we just had to be careful in terms of CPI this week. If we stay elevated above this gap that I'd like to see fill uh, going into CPI, then we're looking at some form of a vol fall scenario yet again after CPI over the course of the days following. So if we were to fill this gap early this week, that'd be ideal because then that means that participants aren't as well hedged going into the event. And then after the event, or maybe even during the event, we can see a downside move, uh, at least the downside move that I am looking for. So this gap, very important, uh, roughly around 1310. It'd be great if we could fill it before CPI, but we'll see what happens, especially because people like to hedge, like I said earlier, uh, before key events like that. And lastly, I do want to mention dark pull prints, very light week last week, especially coming off of the summer where we saw quite a bit of large prints. We were looking at like 4 billion prints some days, maybe even 5 billion prints 
Uh, so quite a bit of premium behind those. But if I do scroll down, we did have a couple over a billion, 1.1 billion, as well as 1.4 billion at around 445.45 slash 44. Uh, so this area is of interest, at least for this week. Also, if I scroll down the largest prints of the week, uh, not only this 1.7 billion around 444, but also if I go up just a little bit so I can go back to previous days, because this was just Friday. If I go back to Wednesday, you'll see that we did have a large print between Wednesday and Friday. That is the 2.1 billion as well as 2.2 billion. Uh, between this tight range of around six cents. Uh, so 446.22 and 446.16, these were the largest prints in terms of overall premium in a range that we saw of last week. Around 4 billion in overall premium in a range, decent amount for sure. However, it wasn't consistent throughout the week. So the main use case of this would just be the levels uh, going into next week. If 446, roughly around 20, uh, 446.20, we'll just say for simplicity's sake, if that is tested at some point this week, which I'll go to a spy chart here, if that is tested at some point this week, uh, then we can see initial rejection, but bulls would have a goal of getting above that level roughly. So that level is just about here. So I'll show uh, people visually on here just about 446.21 right here. So bulls would like to see a break back above uh, this level for further upside. We were unable to hold above it uh, based on Friday or at least any day throughout last week after the sell-off that we saw on Wednesday. In terms of the short-term bounce theory that I'd like to see, Heading into this week, we do need to get back above this level and then crack past high of day from Friday and then smooth sailing all the way up to around 448 mid to 449 where we'll try uh, to fill this gap down that we had from over here between Tuesday and Wednesday of last week. So make sure to watch this level. Largest premium in terms of dark pool prints as of last week, which typically means you do want to one, add it to your chart, but then two, uh, monitor how price reacts to that level. If we stay below for a while, it's unable to get back above. That's actually a bearish sign. We'll probably retest around 443 again uh, before it decides where to go afterwards. But other than that, as always, appreciate you guys watching this video and I'll see you guys next time on Wednesday.